Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. So due to many requests, I am updating my Hackchi tutorials for 2019. Moving forward, even if Hackchi has an update, the method I show you in this tutorial will be how to hack your system. The most current version as of the recording of this video is 3.5.3. .3. You can find a link to the releases in my description. You'll be taken to the Hackchi CE page, which looks like this. You'll have three options for download. You have the debug version, installer, and the release version. The installer version just gives you the executable. The release version is a zip file that you can take with you on a flash drive. And the debug is the same as the release, except you have a debug window when you start the program, which can be handy. For this tutorial, we will be using the debug version. The players we have to thank for this are Team Shinkansen. We have Skogaby, Princess Daffy, Dan the Man, and Mad Monkey. Mad Monkey was the creator of the very first Hackchi program. And then the current group got together to develop Hackchi Community Edition. Hackchi CE is the most recommended version to use. The developers are still actively working on it and they can assist with troubleshooting. Before we begin, one of the major problems that people have when trying to troubleshoot their system is that Hackchi is blocked either by a firewall, a virus protection, or a VPN. So when you're installing this for the first time, you may want to disable those to prevent that from happening. All right, we're gonna unzip this package and get started. I recommend that you extract it to its own folder. So this is what your Hackchi folder will look like. You wanna double click on the Hackchi.exe. You'll get the hello message, and then you have a message from team at Shinkansen saying if you have any problems using Hackchi CE, you can join their Discord server at this link here. I'll also have it in my description. And they do have a subreddit, Mini SNES Mods. They prefer you use the Discord for questions rather than the subreddit because you'll get a quicker response. Also, you may get a pop-up asking to allow permissions to your firewall. You have to say yes to that pop-up or you cannot use this program. So this black box here is what you get with the debug version. It just kind of tells you what's going on in the background when the program is active. What you have to do is go up to Kernel. Go to install repair. It'll ask if you want to flash the custom kernel. You have to select yes. Then you just have to follow these steps. Make sure the power button on your NES or SNES is switched off. Reconnect your system to the PC via a USB cable. It's very important you use the cable that came with your system. Some of these USB cables don't have data lines in them and they only power devices. So if you try and use a cable that doesn't belong to the system, it may not work because of that. So we've inserted the power cable into our SNES Classic. The next step says to hold the reset button while pushing the power switch. Then it says after a few seconds, you can let go of the reset button and you'll see that it is starting to install the custom kernel onto your system. And this can take a little bit, so let it do its thing. Once it's finished, you'll get this notification right here saying done. You can upload games to your NES or SNES Mini now. So we're gonna click OK. You'll see that our hack cheat kind of changed a little bit. Our games are different and up here it says what system we have connected to it. So it changed from the NES to the Super NES. You also notice we have a green dot in the corner. That means that the install went perfect and we're ready to add some games. If you click on some of the games that are on the system already, and we take a look at the command line, you see that these are running with Canoe. Canoe is the native emulator to the Super NES. If you're using an NES Classic, the native emulator for that one is Catchy Catchy. You can only keep about 40 games on the screen at one time. So to circumvent that, you can create folders. To create folders, you just hit this structure button here at the top and then go to custom. Then when you go to synchronize your games, the folders manager will pop up and you'll be able to add folders. I'll go over how to add folders in a more detailed tutorial in the future. So I'm just gonna show you how to add a couple SNES games to your system. And again, if you're using an NES Classic, you can use the same method for adding NES games. You wanna go down here to the add more games button. Then you're gonna to navigate to wherever you keep your Super Nintendo ROMs. I'm gonna pick a couple here from the list. I like Dracula X, Donkey Kong Country 2, and Mech Warrior. Click open in the bottom and you see your games are added to the top of the list under new apps. If you go to this Google button right here, it'll give you a selection of different images you can use. So since we're running Super Nintendo games, that's what we want. So now our games look much better. So now down here, it says we have 24 games selected. We're gonna use 4.5 megabytes for all the games that we have now. And once again, looking at the command line, you can see that all three of these games are gonna be running with Canoe. A very useful setting you may wanna enable is to use a controller combination to go back to your menu. That can be found here in settings, controller hacks, use button combination to reset. You can select what button combination you want to use by choosing this next option. You just put a check mark next to the buttons you want to push all together to take you back to the menu. The default is down and select. 
there is a way to play games from other systems on your NES and SNES Classic. I'll go into more depth on how to do that in later tutorials, or you can check the tutorials I've done already. But the main way to add different systems is to go to the Modules tab and the KMFD Mod Hub. This should be the only place you get your cores to run with HackG. They've been tested on this system and these are guaranteed to work. You wanna to go to this RetroArch tab first and get the newest version of RetroArch Extreme. Then you go to the KMFD Cores tab and this is where all your system cores are going to be found. So if you find other cores online somewhere, do not use them. They may be old cores that aren't compatible with this new version of HackG. So the safest method is to use the KMFD Mod Hub and get your cores right here. You will just click download module. Then when you go to your modules tab and install extra modules, you can see they're added right here under KMFD cores. All that's left now is to transfer these games to the SNES Classic. So we're gonna hit this synchronize selected games button down here. We only had a few games on there, so that went pretty quick. But the more games you're moving to your system or a flash drive, this can take a while. So that's it, we're gonna turn on the SNES Classic and take a look. All right, you can see here with the SNES Classic turned on, we now have an additional couple games here. We have Castlevania Dracula X that we added and Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest. So let's start one up and make sure it works. Looks like we're good so far. All right, so let's see how it plays so far so good. Everything looks really nice. The controls are very responsive. We are Richter in this one. Right now we're just fighting a couple skeletons, no problem. So as you can see, everything is running super smoothly as if this game was meant to be on the system itself. I'm gonna hold down and select and we should be taken back to the main menu. And we are, there we go. And just like all the other games, you can see you can create a suspend point if you like for any games that you added. So let's give Donkey Kong Country 2 a shot. And looks like Donkey Kong Country 2 is playing just fine as well. Gotta make sure you get those bonus barrels. So we're gonna grab this token and that's it. One more time, hold down and select to go back to the menu. And here we are. Like I mentioned before, I'm gonna have a lot more tutorials coming out on how to install the various systems and different things you have to do to get those to run correctly. So make sure you keep coming back to check those out. So as always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.